It's early in the morning. 早上好，早晨。Good morning. Veteran tour guide Benny Pan is picking up Chinese guests for a trip to the Blue Mountains. Our business has been so busy since last month. There are more Chinese tourists coming back than expected. Keen to see Australian sights, Chinese tourists are now the second biggest source of international visitors after New Zealand. In July, the number of short-term arrivals jumped 111 percent compared to the previous month. My company pick, buy the big bus, six bus. We are already, or all driver already. The Albanese government has given the green light to the ADS visitor visa, which allows guided groups to return, effectively removing the final hurdle that was limiting tourism to Australia. With the visa processing recommencing, that's going to be、uh, an even bigger boost to our tourism potential from China. Tour groups make up more than a third of holiday arrivals. In 2019, they spent more than half a billion dollars. Once other holiday makers, business travellers, and international students are factored in, the market is worth much more. Pre-pandemic,、uh, China was our largest source of、uh, tourism. Um, worth about 12 billion dollars to the Australian、uh, Australian economy. We started the year at about 10 percent of、um, uh, pre-pandemic travel from、uh, China. It's now mid-year, up、uh, up to about、uh, 50 percent, and we're looking forward, but that by the end of the year,、uh, we'll be back up to where we were pre-pandemic. Today, this is a good day for the economy. Have you ever been to the Dabao Jiao? In June, a new campaign was launched in China. Two months later, Beijing lifted the ban on tour groups to Australia, which some say contributed to a thawing relationship. <laughs> That opened the door for visitors like Bao Weijun to come here. Australia's got unique views, and we love the beaches here. While Chinese tourists are coming to see views like this. The industry is concerned we may not have enough flights to keep up with the amount of Chinese visitors that want to come here. In August, flights from China to Australia returned to 73% of pre-pandemic levels. Seat capacity is expected to reach 79% by the end of this year. We really need those seats to put the bottoms on to get people here. Aviation analysts say airfares are 30 to 50 percent more expensive than they were in 2019. The primary one is the shortage of capacity. The other issue, of course, is inflation.、Uh, fuel prices gone up. It'll be another 12 months before we get anywhere near the pricing levels of 2019. Qantas is planning to resume direct flights between Sydney and Shanghai in October, but that's hit turbulence. After the consumer watchdog moved to block its partnership with China Eastern to share the route, strictly speaking, it is a monopoly situation. But there are very competitive airlines either side that can offer a, a really good fare into Shanghai that will produce price competition for these two carriers. It's also hoped Anthony Albanese's visit to Beijing later this year will improve travel between the two nations.